Tell me a little bit about your job. I know that you are a volcanologist. So what exactly is that? How do you get into it? What's your day look like? And how do you become one? So I, what I really like about the field of volcanology is it's inherently multidisciplinary. People end up coming into it from a number of different areas. I came in via one of the classical routes, which is geology. Mm -hmm. I did an undergrad degree in geology in Montreal, stayed there and did a master's degree um, in volcanology. So I ended up doing... So you knew at a fairly young age that you wanted to study volcanoes? Um, no, actually. Oh. Uh, my father is a geologist, so that was the last thing I wanted to do until college in Montreal. <laughs> and I had a fantastic professor uh, in college who opened up my eyes to what had been around me the whole time. Um, and so that got me into geology. So, okay, hang yeah, on a second. Sure. Let's, let's just touch on that. What did that professor do that made you go, oh my gosh, I had no idea that what was right beneath my feet yeah. was so fascinating. Yeah. What, what was that that, that lit, so, lit up your imagination? So his name was Kirk McGeeky. Uh, he was a sedimentologist from Glasgow with this thick Scottish accent. But what he did was make it exciting. It, everything that I'd taken for granted as a kid growing up he basically put the spark in there going, this is cool. And it was dynamic. It was energetic. Uh, you know, he brought in foam rocks and would throw it at people in the front class and give them a spook. And you know, yeah, just it was it made it can, made me open my eyes. Can you remember one of those little things that he goes and then there was this and you went, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. What, I mean, what, it, what, what would be one? I guess it was sort of well, in in that situation, it was more, I guess, maybe a bit more ephemeral. It was more broadly rather than a punctual event. Um, that would be more during my master's degree um, or actually my undergraduate degree where, you know, I wanted to go into planetary geology. I wanted to be a space cadet. Yeah. Um, then you start playing and you, you, you look into that and it, it's always, I found that it's those mentors, professors, uh, you know, other people that can guide you who can just, go, hey, but what about this? And then you follow your nose. You start yeah. digging into it. I started doing volcanoes on Venus. That was a, a project that I ended up using uh, for the end of my uh, um, BSc <laughs> honors thesis. There was these channels, <laughs> these rivers on Venus that they, you know, rivers on Venus, the surface temperature of Venus is almost 500 degrees Celsius. How and can yet, you have a river? How exactly. Can, yeah. And it couldn't be a river, but it looked right like a river. It had deltas and oxbows and meanders and everything so we ended up following our nose and say well it's this possibly this oddball kind of lava that has an eruption temperature at the same surface temperature so maybe it, the lava acts like water and behaves like a water river on earth and then it ended up taking me down another path and saying well you know what the planetary stuff is fun but you wait 10 years the orbiter gets into location and then somebody's mixed up the difference between centimeters and inches and it blows up uh, and then you're back to scratch again versus playing with volcanoes on earth well they're no, everywhere they're everywhere yeah <laughs> uh, and if you can find the way to get the money to go and do that research wow. they're in different countries the beauty that i find about volcanoes is each one's got their own personality every single volcano is different we like to group them so we can try to understand them. The volcanoes like Hawaii versus the volcanoes like Mount St. Helens and Mount Meager. They're, they're different types of volcanoes, but each one has its own personality. So trying to understand, wow. learn that personality is really... So, so you travel a fair bit for your job. Yeah, yeah. And you get to go to some pretty exotic locales yeah. and you're not hanging out down at the beach. Nope. No, you're climbing mountains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in fact, because um, I did my master's research in Costa Rica and then most of my PhD work in uh, on a volcano in Nicaragua. And it took me being a professor at SFU and leading an undergraduate field trip down to Costa Rica and Nicaragua for me to be able to actually see the country it was all I'd ever do is go airport volcano back to airport go next because <laughs> you needed the data you had a short amount of time wow. so um, yeah it but again it, they're so fascinating um, there's so many different aspects so you are a volcanologist but mm -hmm. you're also a professor yep so what is your day-to-day -day sort of 
uh, normal job if it, if it, if there is such a thing but mm-hmm. the, you know the thing that you really get yeah. your paycheck for so the, what does that look like so the mm-hmm. part of the paycheck is getting up and standing in front of either a fourth year class of volcanology uh undergraduates We're, so we're doing a volcanology course in the fall um or an introduction to natural hazards for just general interest so mm-hmm. there's my teaching job there's the Graduate students coming in going, Glenn, you need to tell me about this and how should I spin this story here? Uh Um, Then there's a whole lot of sitting in front of the computer and writing the next grant proposal to get the finances, to do the field work, to pay for the graduate student so you can do the research, publish the paper and start the whole cycle again. So wow. that's that's less fun, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, again, part of the job. And, yeah, you do a bit more of the management. Um, but what's interesting is, especially working with some of the senior undergraduates and my graduate students, they come in, they've done all the nitty-gritty, you know, pulling apart the question, processing the data that they've collected, and then you start firing off ideas. Hey, what about this? What about that? And those sparking sessions where they come up with something totally new are so exciting. So is that the most exciting part of the job? Absolutely. Because are you not doing for them what your mentor did for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah. And and you can see them, you know, the graduate students will grow and mature as they're doing this. Uh, my first MSc student, uh, she's now a, a volcanologist at the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. <laughs> my biggest, and I would always put this mm-hmm. in letters of reference mm-hmm. for her, she came to me and I knew I'd succeeded because she said, Glenn, you're wrong. And this is why you're wrong. I'm going to prove you wrong. And she did. And ah. that was great because then we you know, were able to follow what ended up being the right answer for that you know, study. So you see them mature and bring their own aspects and own ideas and refine them, uh, you know, seeing them grow. It's like watching your children grow up. So what does a typical day look like for you? Like what time do you get up and, and when does your mind uh, immediately start to shift into the, the, the majesty of Mother Earth, or especially volcanoes for you, and when does it turn off? <laughs> it doesn't turn off. It's always going something, you know, the, because I love what I do. The, That's self-evident. You know, Just look at the smile on your I, face. I, I was <laughs> painting shingles all day yesterday for some construction that we're doing in the garage in the backyard. But I'm thinking about, oh, yeah, there's this project. I've got to get that permitting done. Mm-hmm. And so you're always thinking things through. And, you know, student has got this idea that's coming through and it's in the back of your mind. And sometimes it's at two in the morning and you have that flash. It's like, ah, there is the point. Do you get out of bed? And I write get it out down? of bed and write it down. Yeah, yeah, or I'll run downstairs and now the brain's on and I'll be working for yeah, a couple Yeah, because otherwise hours. it's too easy to lose that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, people think, well, you're crazy. You need to go take some downtime. Our downtime this summer, my wife and I are going to take the boys and we're going to drive down to Yellowstone for two weeks camping. To go check out guys. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the largest <laughs> volcanic systems in the world. Yeah, well, uh, what could be better? So, you know, it's, it's great. But, it, I mean, that keeps me going. Uh, it keeps me young. Uh, you know, the students are always energized and, and sort of full of new ideas. And, and that's what makes it fun. If it's so, not fun, it's not worth doing. So uh, for somebody who might be watching you and the enthusiasm that's sort of exuding out of the screen as you're talking about your career, where would you say would be a good place for them to get started if they say, yeah, I think I want to find out about that? So mm-hmm. I always say, I, I think, earth sciences, the geo, broader geosciences, having just get in a good, solid science background. Be open, have that scientific method, mm-hmm. thinking through how do you go and do that. Um, my team consists of geologists, geochemists, physicists, mathematicians. They're all going to be doing different aspects of volcano-related or natural-related yeah. uh, hazards um, research. But having that really scientific curiosity get into the science the if, if i'm doing a cell job for geology i'd say if you like all of the sciences but you can't pick one think about geology because we use all of the sciences and and you know that's but again it's just one aspect if you wow. come in from the mathematics background there's going to be all sorts of tools that you can apply to the question that we're trying to answer and that's what makes it fun 
Wow. Thank you for sharing what your world is like and how you got to be you.